When you bring your child home for the first time, you want a baby monitor you can trust. When you choose Stork, you choose technology trusted to monitor 10 million babies in hospitals every year. Stork continuously tracks your baby's pulse rate, oxygen saturation, and temperature. Visit MassimoStork.com to learn more. Stork, a revolutionary baby monitor, is born. Stork is not a medical device. Read and understand all product labeling. Massimo data on file. Moms and dads, I bet you can relate to this email. Kirk, my son is just like the kids you described in your podcast. He comes home feeling defeated after school, feeling like he isn't smart. But I got him Crunch Labs, and he loves it. Building the new toy and watching Mark Rober makes him feel smart. And then he explains, talking a million miles a minute, like our kids do, all the cool science facts he's learned. It's like I get my real kid back when he's building his Crunch Labs toy. And that is exactly why I was so psyched when my niece first told me how her son loves Crunch Lab. Confession, this is the one sponsor I wanted more than any other because it's such a perfect fit for our kids. So go to crunchlabs.com slash calm and you'll see why. Crunch Labs is a STEM monthly subscription build box for kids. Your kids get a really fun toy in the mail every month. And what kid doesn't love that? And then they put it together by watching a step-by-step video from former NASA engineer Mark Rober, where he teaches all the cool physics that make the toy work. Mark's passion is helping kids think like engineers. And this helps your kids develop resilience and problem-solving skills while having a ton of fun. Get your kids something they will actually love, use, and look forward to getting all throughout the coming year. Build your child's confidence now. Visit crunchlabs.com slash calm and get your kids Crunch Labs today. So here's the blunt question. What do you do if you have a child whose phone usage is out of control? It's changing his or her moods. It's causing constant conflict in your home. And it often feels like you're held hostage to this technology, this device, and you can't quite figure out what to do. Well, that's what we're going to discuss on today's episode of the Calm Parenting Podcast. So welcome. This is Kirk Martin, founder of Celebrate Calm. You can find us at CelebrateCalm.com. If you have any struggles, reach out to our son, Casey, C-A-S-E-Y, at CelebrateCalm.com and tell us about your family, what you're struggling with. We discuss it as a family. We reply to you personally and usually very quickly because our mission is to help you. So let us know how we can do this. So This podcast is going to skew slightly to older kids, right? Kids who have an iPhone or a cell phone. But I encourage those of you with younger kids to listen so you can avoid this scenario playing out in your home at all costs because it's not fun and can actually be really destructive. If you have younger kids, I would encourage you to do what it takes now to reduce your child's reliance on screens. And that means changing your lifestyle. It means leading your kids outside. Look, when we were kids, our parents were like, go outside. They didn't even have to tell us. We went outside. We knew what to do outside. We had freedom to roam the neighborhood, be gone all day, not come home till dinner time. Your kids don't know how to do that. And so you're going to have to lead them. It's going to take some energy. But we want to replace that screen dependence with purposeful missions and projects that your kids are curious about. I know it's hard. There's no blame. There's no guilt, right, for any of this. It is really hard and is so easy sometimes just to give the tablet, the screen to a child because it keeps them occupied and satisfied and content. And then a lot of our kids who are on the spectrum, um, that, that predictability of the screen, something they can control, is a lot easier than managing Uh, unknowns and social interactions. So that makes it hard too, right? But I want us to be purposeful about this. And I promise you, I promise you this, you will never, uh, when your kids are older, you will never say, you know what? I wish I would have introduced screens earlier. I wish my kids would have, but you're not going to say that, right? Remember when you say no to one thing, you have to say yes to something else that's appropriate. So just saying like, No, you can't do that. It's like, well, what can they do? So we're not dealing with general screen usage in this episode. 
I want to focus almost solely on the usage of cell phones. So let's talk about what I see as, in many ways, an epidemic in modern family life, right? And what I'm spending an increasing amount of time on during our one-on-one phone consultations is this, doing an intervention to rescue kids from their phones and rescue families from this ongoing conflict and fights and stress and all the chaos it creates. See, out of a good heart and good intentions, you gave your child a cell phone so they could connect with friends, that's important to them, for convenience in contacting you, maybe for safety reasons. And you thought you could use it to teach your kids how to be responsible with and also control their technology. But here's what really happened. You unwittingly, again, no blame, no guilt, you unwittingly handed them an addictive device at the height of their social insecurity and their impulsivity when their world is measured, what happens the next five minutes, when their identity is being shaped and swayed by social media forces beyond our control and while their hormones are changing drastically. And the result is this. Their heads are constantly staring down at their phone, furiously texting their friends that are much more important than you are at this age, right? They're being exposed to literally tens of thousands of images and videos and concepts each day that whipsaw their emotions, right? Some kids are being exposed to porn and they don't know how to establish any boundaries with it. And so they can't put it down. And this device is now controlling and dictating their moods. Your kids have changed. They're less connected, more irritable. They talk back more. Your relationship, the family dynamic is now governed by this phone and it produces endless fights. It's constant tug of war, taking it away, giving it back, taking it away, giving it back. Constant threats back and forth, right? At some point, perhaps you gave in because you just got exhausted and thought, well, at least her grades are still okay. Or at least he's connecting with someone and he's not alone. It keeps him occupied and out of our hair. And I understand that. There's no blame or guilt, right? But now it's gone too far and it's literally tearing your relationship and family apart. And you're now afraid to restrict or even take away the phone because if you do, your child will freak out. They'll yell for days. They'll give you the silent treatment. Some of them will threaten to destroy your house and perhaps even get physical with you, right? And I, I take that seriously. But that alone should tell you that it's gone way too far. The fact that you're afraid to do something for the protection of your own child right? The fact that you are now held hostage by this device and it's controlling your home, that means we've got to do something about it. So you have to act. Now, each family dynamic is a little bit different. This can be tougher and more delicate when both spouses aren't on the same page. Or maybe you've got a big, strong teenager being disciplined by a smaller single mom. Happens all the time. I'm just being realistic here. I've been helping parents walk through this step-by-step process of restricting usage of the phone and having good success with it. In some cases, we're taking the phone away altogether. Some cases, we're restricting usage to certain hours, i.e. like phone must be put on the kitchen counter at 10 p.m. We're putting parental control, controls on the phone. In some cases, we're removing Snapchat or TikTok from the phone. So I wanted to share with you some general principles and some specific strategies, even some scripts So you have a template for how to do this. Again, in a podcast, I can't get to every single different variation you have in your home, but I hope that this gives you a framework, right, for bringing this up and discussing this maybe with your spouse or with, uh, if you're a a single parent, maybe with um, some friends that are going through the same thing, discuss this, right? So number one, when we're talking about restricting, taking away the phone, This is what I want you to know. This is something you are doing for your child, not to them, right? They are physically and emotionally unable to make healthy choices right now for their own good. And that's what your job is as the parent. You're doing this for them, right? Restricting phone usage or taking it away altogether, and that's all up to you, is the compassionate thing to do for your child. This device is literally changing their personality. It is harming relationships and they're kind of helpless to change. So what you are doing for them 
is a compassionate thing, right? Now, by the way, when we do this, no snotty tone. You know what? If you would have, if you could have controlled it better, you could have kept it. No, that's unfair. It's unfair what we ask kids to do with something that's so addictive. So no need for the snotty tone. But we're going to do this because it's compassionate and the right thing to do. Number three, it's the right thing to do. You're not being a strict parent. You're being a responsible parent. And you know this already inside. You know it's the right thing to do. But you haven't known how to do it or you've been hesitant or maybe even afraid for good reason, right, to take the actual steps necessary because it's really hard to do. It's going to be tense. It's going to be ugly for some time. But it's the right thing to do. So I want you to consider it. Number four, you've got to have some non-negotiables in your home. For example, hey, no phone usage at the dinner table ever. No. And that includes dad as well, right? Can't be like, kids, you can't use your phone and dad's over there doing it or mom's doing it. No phones at dinner. This is our family rule, right? You only get a few minutes with your teens anyway because they come downstairs, shovel their dinner down, and then ask to be excused. But have some non-negotiables, right? Number five, you should not dismiss how important the phone is to your preteen and your teenager. At this age, it is critically important and natural that their social connectedness is important to them. Don't minimize it. It is important. They have a great fear of missing out on things with their friends, and that's a very real consideration. So I don't want to just like, dismiss it altogether, right? Many, if not most, of their friends are permitted to text until late at night, sometimes midnight, sometimes 2 a.m., right, or later. So if you make your child turn off his phone at 9 p.m. or 10 p.m., then your teenager is missing out on all the fun texts that happen later at night. So when they walk into school the next day, guess what? They've missed out. And that's very real to them. So don't dismiss it. Number six, that said, you're the parent. This is not a negotiation. I'm fine with getting buy-in and ownership. We talk about that all the time. But at the end of the day, this is not a negotiation. Your child doesn't really get a say in this. You know best. You pay the bills. It is your house. Again, you are the parent, and I want to give you the confidence to act as a responsible parent. Now, seven, some of this depends on how well the child is handling school, everyday life, and his or her phone, right? Is your child involved in sports or drama club or an extra extra curricular? How is his or her attitude overall? Right? If your child is generally handling life and school pretty well, then you can give a little leeway if you want, as long as that continues. Right? But if your child's grades and attitude are suffering, then you need to be more restrictive. This also depends on your relationship with your child. I'll know any way to say this, but this, to be blunt, if you have been an overbearing dad, for example, could be mom, but I'm going to use dads because I'm a man. If you've been an overbearing dad who is always on your child, pointing out what's wrong and not what's right, if you haven't bonded over something and there is a deep-seated anger or resentment between you, then you should work on that first before initiating a difficult conversation. The relationship comes first. So here are some potential action steps. Honestly, I'd wait until the weekend to begin this process so you have time, so you're not rushed, And you can deal with the inevitable fallout of what's going to happen, right? Lately, I've actually dedicated parts of weekends to walking parents through this in real time because it is a hard thing. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify. The global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. 
Stream Paper right now and help close the gap. So number one, I'd encourage you, determine exactly what you want, right? We want to restrict phone usage to these hours and have the phone off by 9 p.m. on weekends, weeknights, and 10 p.m. on weeknights. I just messed that up. And I'm not re-recording this podcast because I'm 12 minutes in. So let me repeat that. So one of our goals may be, let's restrict phone usage to these particular hours. And we want the phones off in the house by 9 p.m. on weeknights and 10 p.m. on weekends. Depends on the age of the kid, right? It could be 10 and 11 p.m. I don't know. That's up to you, right? Screen-free time for one hour every evening. Do you want to enforce that? I've done that with some families. Hey, every night from 7 to 8 p.m., no screens. Instead, we sit around bored looking at each other like, what did we used to do before we had phones? But eventually, you know what happens? You end up finding some fun stuff. You end up playing board games. I know your kids are going to be like, you know why they call it board games? Because they're boring, right? Or you get yourself outside or you play games. You find some different things. Not recommending that, although it's a great idea. It's up to you what you do right? Um, Some of you, you need to put parental controls on your child's phone, right? Part of that is controlling access to which websites they visited, right? Some of it is so you can automatically restrict the total number of hours spent on the phone, right? You can do that right from certain apps, right? Um, Some of you may want to take away the phone completely for a period of time, right? And I know, look, your child's not going to like this. No child And very few humans want to be held accountable. But the truth is, it's for their own good. And that's why they have parents, right? So I just want you to know this little side note. If you put parental controls and you can see what websites they're on, don't freak out, right? Be realistic about it. Know that some of your kids are going to go to sites that are places where you don't want them to go. But now you know, and you can have an honest discussion about how it's normal to be curious about certain things when you become a teenager, and that's for a separate discussion. But again, it's the same process if you have that discussion, but you're curious about it. You don't get them to shut down. Number two, you may want to frame the entire discussion this way. I like this a lot. Hey, dad or mom and I have noticed we are on our phones way too much. Even as adults, We find ourselves distracted. We've got our heads down way too much. So we want to make some changes as a family. And we're wondering, how could we actually do that? How could mom and I, dad and I, how could we stop being on screen so much? Right now, look, ultimately, it's your decision as the parents. But it would be really good if your kids have a little bit of insight into how to do this. That gives them some ownership. So you could continue on. It may sound like this. Look, son, daughter, we need to apologize to you. We put something in your hands that is highly addictive and we expected you to somehow have control over it. And that was wrong of us. We set you up for failure. By the way, side note, that takes away the snottiness of, you know what, if you would have learned how to control your phone, we wouldn't have to do that, right? Or we wouldn't have to do this. You're changing around like, no, I apologize to you. I handed this thing to you before you were ready. It doesn't matter what your motivation was. We did it and now it's controlling you and our expectations were wrong and we set you up for failure. And now this thing we gave you is dictating your moods, your personality, our relationship and our home life. We fight constantly. And that doesn't feel good for anyone. Look, you're just speaking the truth. Now, they won't want to admit it, but they know it's true. We have also noticed that we as the parents have allowed our phones to control us too much. Heads are in screens. We're distracted. Look, I'm anxious because I look at my Twitter feed all the time. It's intruding intruding on my own life and happiness. So here's what we are doing as parents right? Like no phone at dinner. Mom and I are going to have an hour of screen-free time every evening where we get to talk and connect and interact, right? And I'm going to close one of my social media accounts. I'm going to shut down my Facebook or my, 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 my Twitter. I'd encourage you, you lead in this because you probably struggle as well. Why? Because everybody does. It's really hard. So here are some different options. 
Because your phone is wreaking havoc in your life and affecting your grades and relationships, we're going to take the phone away for a period of X number of weeks. Totally up to you how many weeks or months or all together. Now, Q, a World War III meltdown. You're going to get about, they're not going to be like, mom, dad, thank you for doing what's right. I appreciate that you have the courage to do that, what none of my friends' parents have, right? They're not, they're not going to like this, right? Or you could say, from now on, if you want to use your phone, we are going to require that you have parental controls on your phone. And if you keep taking them off or refuse, we will simply cut off service. This is non-negotiable. Of course, they're going to try to negotiate. Of course, they're going to take those parental controls off your phone. And you have to, have to, have to do what you said you were going to do and call Verizon or your phone company and say, we do not need that line anymore ending in 7907. Cut it off. You have to be willing to do the hard work and put up with all that's coming your way. It could be from now on, no phones ever at the dinner table, and your phone must be turned over every night at 9 p.m. sharp or 10 p.m. or 8 p.m., whatever you want, without exception, on the kitchen counter where we can see it. And by the way, for the parents, if you have to, if you need to, take all the phones, Lock them up in a safe, put them in a place up in your room because otherwise you're just inviting your kids to sneak downstairs in the middle of the night and get their phone, right? Let's continue with this. You have every right to be angry and mad at us for putting you in this situation. I expect you to be furious. I expect you to be mad about it. Look, I'm okay with you calling me names, saying how unfair it is that we don't understand how important your phone is. You have every right to do that. But if you think that threatening us or destroying things around the house will help you get this phone back, know that it will have the opposite effect. It will prove to us that we were right, that this device is controlling you instead of you controlling it. And there will be zero chance for you to get it back. So I want you to think before you make any rash decisions. Look, Your kids, some of them are going to freak out. They are highly dependent on this. And now they're wondering like, how can I connect with my girlfriend and and all of my friends? And all those things are very legitimate thoughts that they're having. And they're going to react badly around it, uh, uh, towards you. But I do want to set it out right away. If you think that destroying things around the house will somehow cause me to cower and to give in and give this back to you, son, daughter, I want you to know it will actually have the exact opposite effect. You will have proved that you're not in control of this. Look what this is doing. You're threatening, you're threatening to hurt, hurt us. You're threatening to destroy things over an electronic device. Now, if you refuse to hand it over to us, that's not going to work either. We'll cancel our service plan. So be angry and mad at us for a few days. Fume about how unfair it is, but then let's problem solve like adults. Truth is, your kids are going to be furious and they're going to threaten you in some manner, probably. They're going to withhold kindness and respect from you. It's going to be ugly, but it's the right and compassionate thing to do. It's your responsibility as a parent. Again, no blame and no guilt. Doesn't mean you have to rush out and do it right now, okay? But this is usually how it ends up working out. After a few days detoxing from their phones and the constant messages and images, their nervous system will begin to relax again. Right there, These are kids who all of a sudden life had exposure to all of these images and messages in their face, in their hand, 16 hours a day. And so they become on high alert, and, it, and it, I won't go into everything it does, but they'll begin to relax again. They'll usually become a little bit more pleasant, less stressed, less combative. I'm not going to promise you that they're going to thank you for rescuing them, but they will be grateful to a degree inside because they know 
that they've struggled with this. And they will even feel the difference. It happens almost all the time. After a period of time, the kids are like, I didn't realize how much that was in control of me. I feel so much better now, right? And inside there's a thank you for doing for me what I wasn't capable of doing. I don't need the thanks. As a parent, I just need to do the right thing because I love my child. Now, I know there are variations and I know your kids also have uh, laptops and iPads and they can uh, access their uh, uh, messages there. And so that will have to be included. And then there's the complication at times, right, of, well, they need their iPad to do their schoolwork. How do we cut that out? I don't have time to do all of that in this podcast, but I wanted to give a framework for this, right? Just know that your kids are strong-willed, so they're always going to be fighting you over something, right? And they're going to come back with that persistence, pleading with you to give their phone back. For right now, let's be firm. Let's let this play out. Remember, when you say no to something like this, you have to say yes to something appropriate. That's why we talk a lot about mission and mentor. At this age, I want to get kids engaged in a mission, doing something that they love, that they're really good at, using their natural gifts and passions, accountable to another adult, a mentor, because that is very, very motivating. Other people see good things inside your kids, makes them feel useful and helpful, and it gives them a place to put their brain energy, starting their own business, um, volunteering at an animal shelter or a veterinarian off- veterinarian's office if they're into animals. They've got to fill that with something, right? And so let's find that mission, fill that time and space, something they can throw their energy into with a mentor of some kind, right? And I'll do that on a separate podcast. I hope you found this helpful. I know each situation is a little different. If you want to help me walk, if you want me to help you walk through the intervention, then go to the website, celebratecalm.com, and you look up the mentor tab at celebratecalm.com forward slash, forward slash call dash Kirk. But anyway, you can look it up the website. We've got in the Calm Parenting package uh, or the Get Everything package, you get the um, control screens uh, uh, program, control screens so they don't control you, right? So listen to that. Um, Take the principles we talked about in this podcast and apply it to your own situation. If we can help you in any way, please let us know. That's what we're here for. So you can reach out Casey, C-A-S-E-Y at CelebrateCalm.com. Let us know how we can help you. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Please share this with other parents. I will do more podcasts on screens because there are limitless variations of this, but I hope this framework uh, will uh, encourage you, inspire you, and actually give you some practical uh, strategies to actually get this done in your home. All right, love you all. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.